All right, class, I hope you're enjoying your snow day. Um, this is uh, the PowerPoint on module 16. So we've talked about what GDP is. It's um, consumption plus government spending plus investment spending plus exports minus imports. Um, consumers, consumption. Consumers have disposable income. We call this Y because I is taken for investment, so they used Y for income as if it's spelled with a Y. And you can either spend this money or save it. And so some portion of it, if you spend it, is called the marginal propensity to consume. It just means that you have the money you have earned, the extra money you have earned, you have spent it. And this is measured with the change in consumer spending over the change in disposable income. There is also something called the marginal propensity to save. And that is the same idea. It's the change in consumer saving over the change in disposable income. And we will take a look at this real quickly. This is showing someone who earns $13,000 a year and they spend all $13,000. So the next year they make $14,000. So their marginal on their change in disposable income is $1,000. However, they only spend an additional $800. Thus, it is 800, that is the change in their marginal propensity to consume, over their change in disposable income. So it's 800 over 1,000, which is 0.8. The next year, they earn an additional $1,000. Then they have spent an additional 700, 13,800, to fourteen thousand five hundred dollars and that is seven hundred dollars over an additional thousand and so it's point seven the next year it's six hundred dollars so it's point six because the change is also a thousand dollars and the marginal propensity to consume um, the last year is five hundred dollars over a thousand so it's point five the marginal propensity to save in those same years is just what's left over to get back to 1. So for the first year it's 0.8, so this is now 0.2. The next year it's 0.7, so this is just 0.3 because they saved an additional, so the first time it was because they saved $200 over an additional 1,000, so it's 0.2. Here they saved from year two, uh, 200 to $500 is $300, so it's 300 over 1,000, it's 0.3, so forth and so on. And this is the marginal prop um, propensity to save and the marginal propensity to consume. All right, this is the formula. These are the formulas: the change in consumption over a change in income, or for the marginal propensity to save is a change in savings over the change in income. All right. So the multiplier. It's the idea that we talked about in our project. It's the idea that one person's when you spend money it then gets multiplied throughout the economy because the next person is going to take the money that you gave them and they're going to spend some of that. The part that they save is the marginal propensity to save and the part that they spend is the marginal propensity to consume. But the idea is that when you spend a thousand dollars, actually we'll show you in the next page, but the multiplier is one over one minus the marginal propensity to consume. This is how we calculate the multiplier. So as long as NPC is over, anyway, basically the multiplier multiplies each transaction that happens in the economy throughout the economy. So for example, if we have an economy of five people and the marginal propensity for all these people to consume, so as a society, the marginal propensity to consume is 0.8, what ends up happening is Andrew spends $1,000 buying, I don't know, cupcakes from Lily because he's really hungry. And so she gets $1,000. Well, she's going to save $200 and she's going to spend $800 because her NPC is 0.8, as is the entire town. And generally, the NPC is measured throughout society. That's why it's the same for each person. Lily buys, I don't know, flour from Marsha, and Marsha then has $800. And so she takes that $800, and she's going to save part of it and spend $640. That's 800 times 0.8. And she's going to buy grain from Pat. 
and Pat is going to then have his $640 and he's going to save part of it and he's going to spend $512 and he's going to buy something from Alex um, he's a farmer so I don't know he's buying manure and so for $512 Alex then has that and he says he spends he saves some of it and he spends four hundred nine dollars and sixty cents and he sends that um spends it i don't know on grass for his cows it doesn't matter but the idea is that this original thousand dollars cascades throughout the entire economy and so that a thousand dollars in these five transactions actually ends up being a boost of almost twenty four hundred dollars throughout the entire economy this is the idea of this whole fiscal policy this problem this uh, project that you guys have been working on this um, or like the Obama's plan in 09 to have a stimulus package they spent eight hundred billion dollars and the theory was that if it goes through the multiplier, then it becomes more than eight hundred billion dollars. It comes, I don't know, one and a half trillion, two trillion dollars, and that goes through the economy. Was supposed to go through the economy and stimulate it. Um, and to some degree, it worked. And to some degree, it wasn't as effective as people had hoped. Mostly because the economy was a heck of a lot less healthy than we thought. Okay. Um, work together to answer these good news you don't have to do this would the multiplier be larger or smaller if you saved more of your income the less you save the larger the multiplier is the more you, all right and that's just what it is what is the multiplier if mpc equals 0.67 you do 1 over 1 minus 0.67 that takes you to 1 over 0.33 and that equals 3 how much will GDP change if consumer spending increases by $100 billion? Assume MPC equals 0.6. So to do this, all we're doing is, here, we'll go back. Oh, I should not have gone so far. But basically, we're just punching in 0.6 for MPC into this formula, just like I did previously, but I didn't show you the formula again. And then at that point, all you're doing is multiplying it by $100 billion. Okay. All right, causes of change in consumption, changes in future disposable income. Basically, if you think that you are going to be earning more money in the future, then you are likely going to be spending more money. If you expect to lose your job in the future, or you think that you're going to get a pay cut, or you're not going to get as much business, or whatever, you are likely to spend less. If you actually become more wealthy, then it is likely going to lead to an increase in consumption. Okay. Um, okay, and investment spending. Investment spending is impacted by the interest rate, the expected real GDP, and the current production capacity. We're going to go through each of these. All right, so expected interest rates. Essentially, if you are going to build a factory and you are going to expect that you're going to make a 5% profit off it, but it costs you 7% interest rate to um, borrow the money, then essentially there is less of a, um, there's a question as to whether you would actually borrow. You could also just take your money and loan it out to someone else at 7% and you would make more money. On the other hand, if interest rate is 3%, you would make more money expanding your factory. And so, essentially, the interest rate has a lot to do with whether or not um, people spend money or not, or businesses spend money. Expect a change in GDP. If the real GDP increases, investment spending is going to help ex meet the expected output. All right, so the faster the growth in the economy, the more investment spending. All right? And essentially, if they expect that the economy is going to shrink, there's going to be less investment spending. And also, if you have a large production capacity, but you're under capacity right now, and if demand is 50,000, but you can make 100,000 units, there's no need to expand and to invest. On the other hand, if demand is 125,000, there is a reason to invest into um, your business. Okay. All right, so this is the basics on module 
uh, 16, and this is enough to get, get you guys started on the problem set. Um, the problem set, okay, is right here, which you guys have um, have on Blackboard. It's under Module 16. What is the multiplier if the marginal propensity consume is 0.5? What if is, what is it if MPC is 0.8? It's just asking you to put it into the formula. As a percentage of GDP savings for a larger share of the economy in the country of Scania compared to the country of Amerigo, which is likely to have the larger multiplier, it's just checking to see what you understand about how the multiplier works. Um, consumer spending was sluggish in 07, and economists worried, and economists worried then, an inventory hang, overhang. That should be then, not then. A high level of unplanned inventory investment throughout the economy would make it difficult for the economy to recover anytime soon. Explain why an inventory overhang might, like the existence of too much production capacity, depress current economic activity. So think about it from the business's point of view. If they have lots of inventory, what are they going to do? And then how does that affect this? Okay. Um, this is just asking you to use this as overall consumer spending decreased by 102.8 billion during October of 08. Using this, it's just asking you to plug it into the formula. If there are no other changes to autonomous spending other than the decline in consumer spending in Part A, and increased by 100, uh, I and un, unplanned increased by 100 billion. What is the change in real GDP? This is just um, adding in another 100 billion to the GDP. And GDP at the end of 08 was 14,420 billion dollars. If GDP were to drop by the amount calculated in part one, what would be the percent fall in GDP? This is just asking you to take your answer in A and calculate the percent. Okay, so that is not meant to be scary. How will planned investment spending change as the following events occur? This is basically just a check as to see whether you understood um, the basic concepts that we talked about regarding investment spending. And after that, it's multiple choice questions. So you guys have this down. All right, so you guys are good to go. So let's finish up that um, problem set and make sure you bring it in to class uh, next class. Have a great day.